In this screencast, I'm going to be talking about using OmniAuth for authentication in a Rails application. In previous screencasts, I talked about how the OAuth 2.0 protocol can be used for authentication. In this screencast, I'll continue with that theme as I'll be using an OAuth 2.0 strategy for authenticating with OmniAuth. OmniAuth is a library that standardizes authentication for web applications. OmniAuth allows you to add different sign-in methods with ease. Sign-in methods are known as strategies. A strategy could be Twitter via the uh, OAuth2 protocol, or it could be LDAP. OmniAuth strategies are usually released as gems, but you can also write your own if the gem doesn't exist for the authentication system that you're trying to implement. In this screencast, I'll show you how to install the OmniAuth gem and add an OAuth authentication strategy. On the OmniAuth wiki, there's a great getting started guide. This will walk you through the process of getting set up. If you'd like to use a strategy for which a gem already exists, then all you need to do is add the gem to your gem file. In this example, I'm going to be using Twitter as my OmniAuth strategy. Here's a gem that will allow me to do that. Here I've got a new Rails install. So all I need to do is add the OmniAuth Twitter gem to my gem file. And then run bundle install. Next, we need to tell OmniAuth that we are using Twitter. We can do that by adding an OmniAuth file under initializers. The readme tells you uh, exactly the code that you need to copy and paste. and omniauth.rb and there we go you can see that there are placeholders for the API key and API secret those credentials will be supplied by the application that you're authenticating against Twitter in this case if I head over to apps.twitter.com I can create a new app or I can grab the key and secret from an existing app. If you go to key and access tokens, the, there's the API key and there's the secret. Because this is a new Rails application, I don't already have a home page, so I need to quickly create one. I can use the Rails generator for that. Rails generate controller home and I'll just add an index action. Now we just need to modify the roots file so that Rails knows that this is our new home page. Let's change this from a get to root. Now when I load the application Oops. Now I get our new home page. Now we want to add a link to the home page to allow our users to sign in with Twitter. So let's head over to the index page and I'm going to add a link. Let's say sign in with Twitter. Now for OmniAuth all routes should follow the format auth uh, provider. Uh, in our case we, we know that we're using Twitter so I'm just going to hard code that to Twitter. At this stage you can click the link and it will take you over to Twitter to authenticate. 
However, you'll you'll get an error because Twitter is currently trying to call back to your application, and we haven't created a route for that yet. For that yet, I can show you that now, and you can see that we get an uninitialized constant sessions controller error. So let's generate a sessions controller and fix this error. I'll do Rails generates controller sessions and I'll give it a create action. This will generate a root and a controller uh, which will be called by Twitter after authenticating. And this is standard, this is the standard protocol for all OAuth applications. That's technically all we need for authentication. Now I'm just going to add some logic to prove that it's working. First, I'm going to add a message to the home page that will display the current user's name if they are authenticated. I'm going to go to the home index and I'm going to add a message. Let's do H1. Hi. Oops. Hi. Current user name. And I only want this message to be displayed if we have a current user. So let's add an if statement. If the if we have a current user, then display the message. I'm also going to add a helper to the application controller to allow the application to access the current user. So let's open the application controller and add my method. This just allows the application to access the current user from the Rails session. Finally, I'm going to add some logic into the sessions controller to fetch or create a user based on the data that Twitter provides us. This method will then create a sessions variable so that the application knows that the user has been signed in. So let's open the sessions controller. And oops, we want something that looks like this. So you can see that we, when Twitter calls back to our application, it hits the sessions controller create action. We try to find a user. Um, if we can't find it, then we create it based on the information that's passed back by Twitter. We then uh, save that user to the session and then we redirect back to the home page. All that's left to do now is create a user model with a name attribute. Let's do this with the Rails generator. Rails generate model user and let's give it a name. And let's run the migrations. One last thing that I forgot to do was allow the home page controller to access the current user. So let's do that now. All I need to do is add an instance variable for current user. And now the home page controller can access the current user, allowing it to display our message. And that's it. Now we can test the whole OmniAuth process. Let's head over to the browser and visit localhost. I'll click the sign in with Twitter button and it's going to uh, take us to Twitter, authenticate via uh, OAuth and Twitter then calls back to the sessions controller and you can see that we've set the current user and it's uh, printed out their name on the page. So that's it. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I hope that taught you a little bit about using OmniAuth and OAuth in Rails.